Hello, hello, welcome back to another video. Uh, in the previous video, we started talking about classes and we built this student class. So we talked about data members or fields, attributes, whatever you like to call it. We talked about methods and we talked about the Dunder method string. So operator overloading that allows you to call print. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be making a credit card class. So again, whenever you create a class, you wanna think about the data members, the fields, basically the characteristics, which we put in our constructor. And then you want to think about the behaviors. So basically, what methods are you going to add? All right, so let's think about a credit card. What do we have uh, associated with a credit card? Maybe we have the user, like the owner's name. Maybe we have the card number. We could also add the bank name. So we have self dot, we're gonna call it holder. So we're gonna pass that in as a parameter. And then we're gonna add a, a number. So the card number. So let's pass that in. And then uh, we have the bank name. So uh, let's also add the bank name. In this case, why don't we just default this to Python bank? So we only require uh, the user every time they want to create a credit card, we just request their name and number. So actually, let's just change holder to name. Okay, so the card holder is basically the name. And then what does a credit card do? You use it to pay for things. So let's say balance is zero. Okay, so instead of passing in balance as a parameter, it makes sense to always default all credit cards to have a balance of zero, right? So let's create our credit card object. So we have our card and credit card. And we are only required to pass in at least two parameters because the third one, bank, it already has a default value. So why don't we just pass in Kenny and then our number. So should we make the credit card number a string or an integer? Mm, let's make it a string because, you know, just to be safe, we don't want to accidentally add our credit card number to the balance amount. And then all of a sudden your balance is probably like an eight digit number or a nine digit number. So let's let's make it a string as well. So for Kenny, we're gonna say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For those of you wondering, uh, this is not my credit card number. All right, so let's print card.name and card.number, card.bank and card.balance. Okay, so let's do that. So we've created our credit card object and then we're trying to print each field. So the name, number, bank, and balance. So Kenny, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's my number, Python bank, and the balance of zero. Now, this is not uh, the way we would want to display such information. For instance, maybe you want the card number to also be censored in some way. Maybe you only want to, maybe you want to censor the whole thing. So instead, we want it to not just have a nice way to display the credit card information, we also want to be able to conveniently just print the card. So if we uh, try to do that, by default, because we did not specify a string representation, Python will just print the most basic information, which is the class type. Here we have credit card, and then we have the location, so the memory address. So to do that, we would just type in string, so double underscore string, double underscore, and then pass in self. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a variable. So just call it info and then put name plus self.name and then the new line character. And then let's just return this and see what happens. So now when I overload the string operator, we can print our card now because it has a string representation and we just see so far it's just the name and it displays Kenny. So let's add some more information. How about the number? In this case, let's just why don't we censor the card completely? So let's just put X. Or maybe we just want the last four. So let's assume that the user will always pass in an eight digit string. So we're just going to take self.number and take the slice of it. So from four to the rest of the string, and then we'll add our new line character. And then why don't we also add the bank name? So let's put self.bank. And then finally, we want to add the balance. So let's do self balance. But here you want to be careful because balance is an integer type. So if you try to add a string and an integer, you will get an error. So we have to convert this integer to a string. And then now when we run it, we see Kenny. Here's my credit card number. We censored half of it. And then the bank. So it's Python bank and it bounces zero. 
So we have our defined characteristics of a credit card, and we also have a way to display it. As an additional measure, if you're using the terminal, let's just return the string representation, so string of self. And then now let's add uh, some behavior, some methods. So with a credit card, what do you do? You use the credit card to buy things, right? So you would add a method to charge the credit card. And we'll charge it by some amount. So let's do self.balance plus equal amount. And notice there's an error here because we did not pass in self. We must always pass in self in our methods. That way we can access the data members. So let's print a card and then let's charge. So let's do card.charge. And let's charge, I don't know, $5,000. And then we print a card again. You see that before the bounce was zero. Now we have 5,000. So what happens if I pass in negative 5,000? Well, it would just be the bounce is negative 5,000. This is a problem, right? Because that's basically saying the bank owes you $5,000. So we want to be careful here and then maybe add some checks. So let's say if the amount is greater than zero uh, or less than zero actually or less than equal zero maybe we can just raise an error so raise an exception charge denied so now we run it we get this exception charge denied however we probably don't want to do that because maybe you're buying multiple things at once maybe the first time it charged negative five thousand and then the second time it charged two hundred Preferably, you want the 200 to go through, but not the negative 5,000. So instead of raising an exception, we can just print the message to the user and say, charge denied. And then here we'll just say else self that balance plus equal amount. So we run that. We see now that when we try to charge the card $5,000, nothing happens. Instead, we got a message here, charge denied. And you might want to consider that amount should be an integer type or at least a number type. So an integer or a float. So maybe you might want to say is instance. Uh, amount is an int or is instance amount is a float and that amount is uh oops it should be negative right not is instance or not is instance or amount is less than equal to zero so this is basically saying if amount type is not integer or the amount type is not float or the amount is less than or equal to zero we deny the charge Maybe we have a parentheses or somewhere, probably this one. So now if we run our code, if we try to uh, pass in 5,000 as a string, let's see what happens, charge denied. Okay, so it did not go through the check. Another thing we can do is maybe we can pay, right? You wanna pay your bills. So you can specify the amount you want to pay. So it's basically charging it except you take the balance and you switch it to negative. So you pay off the balance. And then now, let's say we charge 10,000 uh, card.charge. Let's do this. And then let's do the same here. Let's fix this. And then let's run our code. We get 10,000 now. Okay, cool. And then now, actually let's charge it once more. So let's say you bought something that was uh, $200. Uh, Oops, we got to print that card. We get 10,200. Okay, let's pay off our bills then. So let's pay 5,000 and then print our card afterwards. We see that now after paying off 5,000, we have a bounce of 5,200. Okay, so that's the basics of a credit card class. Uh, maybe uh, you want to add a limit. So maybe by default, you limit it to 8,000 or you can specify it. So maybe you can put 8,000 here and then set limit to limit. So there's a lot of things you can do with this credit card class. And yeah, that's basically it. Uh, so here's your data members. Here's your behaviors. So your methods, right? You can charge the card. You can pay off the card. And then here's how you display the information of the card. And uh, yeah, that's it for this credit card class. Hope you uh, enjoyed the video and uh, have a good one.